Hi everyone, we're going to continue looking at Naaman today. If you have not watched video one on his significance in scripture, I suggest you go watch video one talking about Naaman. He can be found in 2 Kings chapter 5. We're only looking at verses 1 through 19 in this story. 1 through 19 is where we're looking at. So if you want to grab your Bible, uh, go to 2 Kings chapter 5 and read verses 1 through 19 and then we'll come back and we will study Naaman's life. Today we're going to be looking at the challenges he had in his life. All right, hopefully you've had a chance to pause the video and read the chapter, uh, verses 1 through 19. So Naaman was uh, a second in command uh, to the king. Uh, he was from a foreign land in Syria that were, they were not Jewish people. He had leprosy. So we're going to look at several things today that give that gave him challenges in his life and how some of those things can be used today we can see the challenges that maybe some of you will have in your lives and how they relate to us and how he started handling some of these things and how he uh, these challenges kind of shaped this part of his life so the first challenge that we're going to look at today is that he had leprosy uh, leprosy can be a wide range of, of things. It could be described uh, sm as small skin ailments, anything from uh, uh, just a, a small tear on your skin all the way to a full body disease of leprosy, which it sounds like Naaman had. And so because of that, in the Jewish society, in the Jewish society, anyone who had leprosy was outcast. They were pushed out of town. They had their, their own little colony, so to say. You've heard of leper colonies. Uh, they, they were pushed away. They could not come. They were considered unclean in Jewish law and in Jewish standards. But in Syria, where he was at, uh, we saw that he was able to continue his duties as the second in command to the king. But obviously it appeared that his leprosy was getting worse and worse and so he was trying to find ways to take care of it he was trying to find ways to uh to get cured and then he was told uh of this man in 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 another country let's just put it that way a man in another country that was able to speak to god and could do great things through god now what we can learn from in our lives here one thing that i want us to look at is why do we seek God? What drives us to seek God? In this case, it was leprosy. His challenge was that he had leprosy, and because of that challenge in his life, it drove him to seek God. We'll see that uh, God wasn't necessarily what he was thinking whenever he left. Uh, we'll see that he was probably looking for a man to heal him, but through it all, he heard about God, and truly what he was doing was seeking God because of his leprosy. He was so desperate he would seek anything or anyone. And I pray that in our lives, it's not always this in something like leprosy or a disease or a death or a sickness or some disaster in our life that makes us seek God. Uh, our goal should be to seek God daily because of the love that He has for us and the love that we have for Him. So his first challenge was that he had leprosy, and that leprosy drove him, though, that was a good challenge because it drove him to seek God. The second challenge we're going to see is that he was not Jewish. And because of the fact that he was not Jewish, many in the Jewish society believed that he shouldn't be healed by God, that he shouldn't be allowed to uh, go see the prophet, that the king shouldn't talk to him. Not only was he not Jewish, he had leprosy, so that was two strikes against him, according to the Jewish people. And him going to Elijah would have been uh, just outrageous to the people in the Jewish community. It would almost be like someone uh, from another country and another religion coming to America looking for a great man of God to heal him. Uh, or uh, a Christian going to another religion looking for their God to heal, heal him or her. That's kind of what it was like when Naaman came in. So this challenge was not only did he have leprosy, which the Jewish people thought meant he was unclean and he was outcast because of this, not only leprosy, but then he came in, he wasn't Jewish, and he was looking for the gods of the, the, the God of the Jewish people to heal him. And they thought, well, if you're not Jewish, our God doesn't want anything to do with you. Fortunately, in our lives today, Jesus Christ came for everyone. The Jewish people didn't understand. They didn't understand that. But when Naaman went to find Elisha, guess what? Elisha told him how God had told him to heal him. And so we see that God still works in all peoples and all lives. So a challenge that many people face today is that maybe their culture, maybe their religion, maybe their family, <coughs> 
maybe their family doesn't agree with their religion, or maybe if they go and accept Jesus Christ, they're considered an outcast. But the great thing is that God accepts all people, and God loves all people. And then finally, as you read through this story, one of his greatest challenges wasn't his leprosy and wasn't that he wasn't a Jewish person, but his greatest challenge is the same challenge that faces many, that faces, many of us face every day, and that is the challenge of pride. He was very prideful. He was a very proud man. He knew what he wanted. He knew that he needed it. He wanted to get it any way he wanted it. And he already had in his mind, though, how he thought he should be healed. He thought he knew everything. He thought it should work his way. And he, at first, was only going to do it his way. I am second in command of Syria. You know, I am this great man in my kingdom. And you want me to go do what? I mean, think about it. His pride got in his way. Because of his victory, he thought, him, he thought of himself very highly. Because of who he was, he thought of himself very highly. We can't let our pride get in the way. What we have to understand is that God knows more than we'll, we, we will ever dream of knowing. As some people you know, like to put it, he knows more than I've forgotten. You, you know, God knows everything. He knows the past, the present, and he knows the future. We need to put our pride to the side. No one is better. No one knows more. God is the one that knows the most. Trust in God. Trust in God's word. Don't let your pride get in the way of separating you from God. Let your pride lead you to trust in God even more. Let yourself not be proud about your accomplishments. But let yourself be proud about the accomplishments that God has done for you and that God is doing through you. So, as we've seen in, these, in this section, Naaman had some pretty big things that challenged him. But we've seen that through it all, he was able to overcome, not because of what he did, but because he put all of his challenges aside, he trusted in God, he sought after God, he took God's word, which came from the prophet, he did what God told him to do, and he was cleansed. And that's what we must learn to do, to do today, is put our challenges to the side, press through them and trust in God that he will bring us through all these things, and that we can find salvation through Jesus Christ, no matter what is going on in our lives.